Kombi Class 52 Diesel Hydraulic in BR Western Courier Livery, bought second hand from Hattons. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be a very good runner. Let's have a look. Just giving it some juice on my gauge master now. We've got 40%, 50%. You can see I'm going past 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. Just listen to the sound it's making and the speed at a full 100%. Yes, that doesn't seem to be a very healthy mechanism, does it? Now, I've already given the motor a service, which means I've changed the brushes, changed the springs, all that kind of thing. And judging by the way it runs, plus the smells that come from it, I've come to the conclusion that the ring field motor is knackered, so to speak. Therefore, what I'm going to do is, let's just stop it right there, without torturing the poor thing anymore. What I'm going to do is, use this conversion kit on it. But first, let me do an unboxing video and show you what it's like when it comes in the box. There's some nice details to note. Stay tuned. Right, so it's time for the unboxing. First things first, we can see this is quite an old model, one of Hornby's older models. It's R352 BR Class 52 Western Diesel. You can see by the packaging that yes, it is indeed an older model. Not recommended for children under 3 months. Sorry, 36 months. It's okay. I'm not going to give it to any kids that young anyway. Oh, the front has a very nice artist's impression of prototype. That is very nice. I'm just going to bring it a little closer to have a look at it. That looks suitably appealing. Nowadays, Hornby just do a line drawing in black and white on the box of their locos, as you would have seen with the Class 92 I reviewed. So yeah, certain things have gone down with Hornby, sad to say. I am a bit of a Hornby fan, but I'll also call the brand out for things that they have been doing better in the past that they don't do so well now. Packaging is one of them. So let's take this one out. It's a used locomotive, so I may be missing some things in the box. There's nothing else in there apart from that card. Just gonna put that to one side. We have a Rigiform tray there. Now, unlike the current Hornbys, this does not have the two holes that you can put. Oh, it does kind of have, but they're not cut out, so okay. It's one area where the present is better than the past. Let's get this thing out. Right, get that aside. First impressions, it's quite a heavy locomotive. I'm feeling a good amount of heft in my hands right here. If we look at the cab, we can see we've got some cab detailing there, but it's all a single piece of silver colored. Is that metal? I'm gonna need to look at this closer. It does appear to be metal. Maybe it is a die cast piece. Maybe that's part of the weight of this thing. Looking at the bottom, you can see we have one unpowered bogey, one powered bogey right there. Now the powered bogey uses Hornby's famous Ringfield motor and as you would have seen on the performance tests, this one is knackered. Let me just quickly get the motor out and show you what it's like. Okay, get my screwdrivers out there, a little difficult to do this on camera but so how you get a Ringfield bogey out typically is you put a screwdriver there, very gently just prise up the end you do have to apply some force to it sometimes which can be a little bit disconcerting but once it's out it's out when you get it out the first thing you notice is there's a wire there so we must disconnect that wire now let's have a look at the bogey itself so you can see that is where the brush retaining clips are which hold the brush springs in the brushes and the brush springs are new because I replaced them with spares that I have and still this motor doesn't seem to want to run. Now if we turn the wheels by hand, we can see that there doesn't really appear to be much resistance. There's a bit of lubricant on the gears, which is fine. Nothing too overly lubricated. So that is where I came to the conclusion that the motor itself is knackered. And also the fact that I can smell something burning when I run it at full speed. Unfortunately, it only moves at a decent, that is to say, a movement speed other than a snail space when you put it to full speed so i'm going to be converting this to use a cd motor because there are people who can repair ring field motors but they aren't in sri lanka as far as i know so the degree of repair that this motor will need is pretty much maybe an entire rewinding maybe a remagnetizing of the ring field magnet 
So rather than send it to a specialist in UK, I've just decided I'm going to do the CD motor conversion. I've ordered the kit. So let's see how that goes. Apart from the motor boogie, there isn't a lot to note there. Yes, that is metal cabs at either end. Very nice. I might fit a cab light later for this thing. Unpowered boogie, not much to talk about there. The way this loco picks up power is interesting because only 6 of the total of 12 wheels pick up power. So if you take the motor boogie and put it upside down here, the wheels that don't have traction tires on it, that's this row of wheels, pick up from one rail. And then if you look at the other rail, those are picked up by these three wheels here. This was a solution that Hornby used to use in the past. Now they just put pickups on all the wheels, which yes is nice, that's good. But having said that, I haven't really encountered any issues with this kind of solution either. So I don't know, more seasoned modelers might disagree with me, but in my experience, I haven't really had issues with this kind of pickup. And I do have this kind of pickup on my two Intercity 125s. They run perfectly, no issues at all. So that's the unboxing for now. Next up, I'm gonna do the conversion. I'm not gonna do the conversion live on video because I'm doing it for the first time and I'm definitely sure that I will stumble in some areas. So what I will do is, I will put a link in the description on how to do the conversion. And then once I've done the conversion, we will return here and see how the performance is with the new CD motor. I should just make one final note. For three axle bogies like this one, you need a six volt CD motor because that is a smaller motor that fits without fouling the center axle. Whereas for two axle bogies like what you'd find on Intercity 125, you can get a proper 12 volt motor because that motor can jut out a bit more without fouling that axle. So what I've got for this in the kit is a 6 volt motor and therefore I need to be aware that I cannot turn up my gauge master controller too high to get it moving otherwise I'll just burn the motor out. Of course the model will run at a silly speed before that, that'll be a telltale enough. But that's a little tip for you to remember if you do this CD motor conversion. Remember some motors are 6 volts and I'm also not sure how kindly those motors would take to the modern crop of controllers that use pulse width modulation where you have a constant 12 or 14 volts being sent to the track but in pulses so at a slow speed you'll have like slower pulses at a fast speed it'll be like pulsing much faster and therefore the motor gets much more current so to speak so let's find out i'll do the conversion and i'll be back so i'd just like to take a few moments to show you some of the neat features of this model some of which you don't even see on modern hornby locomotives first of all that weight there is properly screwed into the chassis to prevent it from moving around. That's nice. Secondly, you've got a single wire only going here because as I mentioned, this uses a split arrangement to pick up power. So this bogey only picks up from one rail and the motor bogey picks up from the other rail. Thirdly, these beautiful caps are actually proper pieces of metal and you can see they've got quite a bit of detail into them there even though it's not painted it's all molded or cast rather into the metal yep this is good old metal which gives the loco quite a bit of heft i did mention that it felt quite hefty in my hand now we know why so you can see the locomotive all dismantled this is right after i took the entire motor apart so you can see the black gears to the left there which will be reused and further to the left just on the left hand side of that little turntable and its red bridges is the parts of the ring field motor that will not be used for this but in this kit nothing had to be modified on the locomotive so the best part is i can revert it back to the way it was at any point in the future so if we take a look here we can see that i haven't fixed most of the gears yet but the white color gear that's on the motor is what came with the 3d printed kit the reason for using that is because the original gear on the motor is slightly larger and therefore was a very loose fit. Now the kit includes this white gear precisely to deal with that particular situation. Sometimes you can use the original brass gear but sometimes you have to use the smaller gear that is provided with the kit. Either way, the locomotive should work perfectly well as we will find out later in this video. Now we can see the rear of the motor where you can see it's clearly a CD drive motor that's been put in with a special housing but otherwise it doesn't make any changes to the overall aesthetic or purpose of the motor right so here we are the new CD motor has been installed let's give it its first ever test select forwards direction 
and let's gently draw it up 20% oh oh my word okay we've got just 30% on the controller there it goes little noisy I suppose the new gear or rather one gear is new that has to play in a bit but wow I'm quite impressed now let's remember that I don't want to go above 50% on the controller so here's 40% wow that's quite a turn of speed and it's really gonna make this locomotive much more reliable and a very happy runner in my collection I should also note that given that it has traction tires I did put new traction tires and I took the opportunity to clean everything let me just get off the tracks and show you so all the gears all the wheels everything has been cleaned now that what remains to be done is to clean up the wiring a bit you can see I've done some temporary budging of sorts all that will be neatened up and in the meantime I've been contemplating adding a cab light directional cab lighting to this loco so that's a future project but for now, let's put the body back and see how it runs. So when you've got your trains taken apart like this, it's a great time to do other modifications such as adding crew to the cabs because usually for motor or bogey maintenance, you won't take the entire thing apart like this. You can just pop out the bogey and do the motor maintenance. But in this instance, since the entire body shell is off, it's a really good time to do adding crew and or if you want to paint the controls or whatever, you can do whatever you like. I'll have to do this again in the future for I want to add cab lights but I haven't got the right LEDs for that yet so that's a modification for the future. Okay here it goes with the new CD motor in place. Quite good, bit noisy I guess it has to bend in a bit so to speak but otherwise it's running very very well I have to say. Certainly much better than with the old ring field motor and the beauty of the kit is I can get the ring field motor rewound, I can get it re-magnetized, there are places in the UK that do that. So when I do that, I can just remove this CD motor kit and put the ring field motor back in because it's a zero modification conversion, so to speak. So there you are. My class 52 Western to here has got a new lease of life. And I'm looking forward to plenty of enjoyment with it. My son will really love it too. So that is my video for today. Thank you for watching and if you like what you've seen here, subscribe because I've got a lot more model train videos coming.